Hello friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In today's class, I will teach you how to make a very easy but cute balloon pop game in MIT App Inventor. Let's have a look at the demo. Open up MIT App Inventor, go to projects, start a new project. Let's call it Balloon Pop Game. Make sure that the toolkit is expert. For screen one, make screen orientation portrait. Now I'm going to upload some media for a balloon image, the balloon pop sound, the background music, and the background image. And I will give all these links in the video description. So I can select them all and drag them here and then drop them here at the same time so that all the media is uploaded at the same time. The music file will take a bit long. Now everything has been uploaded. Now from drawing an animation, drag and drop a canvas onto the viewer and make the background image, the background picture that we uploaded and make the height 80% and the width fill parent, okay? Now, from drawing an animation, drag and drop an image sprite onto the canvas. Rename it to balloon sprite. Make the height 167 pixels and the width 75 pixels. So if you use a different balloon image, then make sure that you give it an appropriate height and width according to that image, okay? And now I'm going to choose the image that I uploaded in the media as its picture. Okay, so it's a nice yellow colored balloon. Now in its properties, make sure that it is enabled. And we are going to make the heading 90, which will make it move towards the top of the screen. And it is very important that you uncheck rotates. And the speed, let it stay the same because I will be actually changing it in the code. Now select this balloon sprite and we're going to duplicate it. So select it and press Ctrl C, Ctrl V on the keyboard for Windows or Command C, Command V for Mac OS. So let me give this a new position. Again, duplicate it. Duplicate as many times as you want. I think five to six is a good number. And don't worry about the position of these balloons. We'll give the actual position in the code. Now, from layout, drag and drop a horizontal arrangement below this canvas. In its properties, make align horizontal and align vertical both center. And the height should be 15%. And the width should be fill parent, okay? Now, from user interface, drag and drop a label inside this horizontal arrangement and let's rename it to score label and I'm going to make it font bold, font size 20 and I'm going to change the text to score colon space zero okay and drag and drop a button on the right side of the score label and let's rename it to start button. As you know, I believe in renaming your components so that you know what they are for. Okay, so I'm gonna make the font bold here too and I'm gonna make the color orange and font size 22 and I am going to change the text on it to start. So you can customize it as you want, okay? Now, drag and drop from media a sound component. The sound component is for playing sound effects. So choose that balloon pop sound as its source. Now, drag and drop a player from media. And this is for playing longer music files. So I'm going to choose loop here so that it keeps on repeating when the music ends and the source is our background music, which is monkey spinning monkey, which is a very fun, entertaining music. The screen design is done. So let's go to the block section. 
Instead of coding the behavior of each balloon separately, we will use abstraction to reduce the amount of code that is repeated for each balloon sprite. So instead of repeating the code five times, abstraction allows us to initialize and set the behavior all at once when the game is started. And also we don't need to write the pop code separately for each balloon. But please don't be overwhelmed. Once you understand the cool abstraction element of MIT App Inventor, you can reduce the size of your code substantially and code change will also be easier. For this, we need a global list of balloons. So go to variables. This is our balloon list and we are going to initialize it to an empty list block from lists and we need another global variable and that is for our score but this is not a list this is a math block which has zero inside it when the screen is initialized so get the screen initialize event we have to start our background music so go to player and call player.start and we are going to put all the balloon sprites inside a balloon list. So get the setter for our balloon list and go to lists and get this make a list block. And we need five slots here. So click on the cog wheel to drag and drop five items. And what are the items? If I click on this balloon sprite, I can go down and this is the actual sprite okay and i can duplicate it and choose balloon sprite 2 so make sure that you add all of them so if you have more than five balloons your list will be longer okay now we need a custom procedure for giving a random position to all these balloon sprites towards the bottom of the canvas because our balloons will be actually floating up and we also want to give it a random speed between 2 and 5 so that some balloons might be a bit faster than the other balloons okay so how can we do that go to procedures choose the top one and let's call it a run position speed okay now this procedure needs an input and that is the balloon sprite. So click on the cog wheel and drag this input here and here X is the input and I'm going to make it more understandable by renaming it to balloon, okay, which is actually the sprite component. And now we are going to use that special abstraction feature of MIT App Inventor and where is it? If I go down on the left hand side, I have this any component segment and today I'm going to demystify it for you. Actually, I've used it before too in my snow globe tutorial. And if I click here, you can see that it has any button, any canvas, any image sprite. So wherever you have the same component, multiple copies of the same component, which has to run the same code, this is the best thing to do so that you have only one piece of code which works for all the similar components, okay? So if I click on this image sprite, you can see that it has many events such as when any image sprite dot edge reached or when any image sprite dot touched. And we can use this piece of code and write just one piece of code and it will work for all similar components okay so right now we are going to be setting the position so if i go down i have this set image sprite dot x okay so i'm going to bring that down and here the component is the balloon okay and two is the value that we want its x to be set to so we want it to be a random position so go to math and get this random integer block and here this is 10 and this is actually a minus block so go to math and get the minus block and go to canvas 
and get its width block. I go down, this is here, here it is. So the random x position will be a value between 10 and canvas dot width minus 10. Next, we are going to set its y. So duplicate it and choose y here. And here I'm not going to be giving it a random position. I'm just going to give it a plus block to make sure that it starts from the bottom of the screen. And this I'm going to bring here and I'm going to choose now height. And again, I can reuse this number block and make it 150. Okay, So this will make sure that it starts from the bottom of the canvas. And now we are going to set its speed. So I'm going to choose speed here. And what is the speed? The speed is also a random number. So duplicate this random integer block. And I don't need this. I want the speed to be between 2 and 5. Now, this done. Now, when are we going to use this random position and speed procedure? When the game is started. And the game is started when the start button is clicked. So, get the when click event for start button. And first of all, we are going to set our global variable score to zero. So, it's kind of a resetting button too. So, go to math and get the zero block. And I'm also going to update the score label. So click on score label and get its set text block. And the text is text block that says score colon space zero. And now we are going to go and give a random position and speed to all our balloons. And it is so simple because we are just going to use a for loop. So click on control and get the for each item block and the, here the list is our global balloon list. Okay. And we are just going to call our random position speed procedure and give it the item. And here we know that each item is actually a balloon component because that is what we put inside the balloon list. Okay. Now you will see the further power of abstraction. If we don't use abstraction, we will have to write a touched event for all of these balloon sprites and an edge reached event for all of these balloon sprites. Okay. But we are going to be using those any component special blocks. And if I click on any image sprite, as I showed you before, it has this when any image sprite touch event. Okay, and we are going to be just using this. So when any image sprite is touched, we are going to first play our pop sound. Okay, so if I go to sound, I have this call sound one dot play, and I can also optionally vibrate the device to make it more exciting. So I'm going to give it a math block and write 200. So it will vibrate for 200 milliseconds, which is just a small fraction of a second. Now we are also going to update our score. So now we have to add a 1 to it. So go to math and get the plus block. And let's duplicate this getter. But now I'm going to choose score here and I'm going to add a 1 to it. So set the score to the previous value of score plus 1 and we have to update our score too so I can duplicate this score label block too and now this will be a join from text and the join is score colon not 0 just a space and then the value of score. So the score has been updated and now we are going to give a random position to our balloon which has been popped that is touched by the user so that it will look as if it actually popped and disappeared. 
In reality, it will just appear at a different place. And how can we give it a random position? We just need to call our this block, this custom procedure. And now this is the interesting thing that instead of that, it will be get component. So when any component, image sprite component has been touched, this code will be run. And we know that all the image sprites in our game are the balloon sprites, okay? So it will be given a random position. Last but not the least, we will use when any image sprite edge reached event to capture the event that the balloon has reached the top of the screen, okay? So if I click on any sprite, I have this edge reached event. And this is important that we check that it is the top edge and not just any other edge. So go to control and get the if block and go to logic, get the equal to block and hover over edge to get the getter for it and go to math and get the math block and choose one here. So when the edge is equal to one, it means it's the top of the screen. Okay. And we're just going to call our custom procedure that is give random position to it. So when the balloons will reach the top of the screen, they will automatically change their position and come back to the bottom of the screen and their X will be different too because remember our X is a random number between 10 and canvas.width minus 10. Okay, so this is done. This cute and easy balloon pop game is completed and I hope you like this tutorial. Happy coding and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I've planned for you. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day and goodbye.